What's going on guys, Waco from Revolution here with Jeremiah Chan here in the Revolution Watch Bar. And this is our third installment of Watches to Wear Without Getting Robbed. And it's a special Christmas edition. Is that why you're dressed to the ninth way? Well, in fact, yes, I just came from a Christmas party. It was black tie, obviously. But okay. it, I also thought this would be a perfect example of what not to wear when you're traveling around this Christmas, right? So the, this pertains in particular, if you're going to the different capital cities of Europe, please don't draw attention to yourself. So that's step number one in terms of not getting robbed. So wearing you the outfit and the watch. Yeah, so if you're wearing a tuxedo and you know, you, <laughs> like me, you've had a, a couple uh, <laughs> of uh, little cocktails or so and your judgment may be slightly impaired and you're wearing this watch in particular, which is a Richard Mille, you're just making yourself an enormous target. In fact, there one day will probably be a reality TV show where someone like myself, a hapless fool, will be deposited in like central London, wearing a Richard Mille in a tuxedo, and then they'll just be like a countdown clock. Yeah. People will take bets How long can you survive before I get jacked you get and killed, right? So guys, this is what not to wear. So let me show you maybe a more appropriate outfit, a little mm. bit more low key. And then we'll talk about some really cool watches to wear this Christmas that will allow you to emerge unscathed from the holiday season. And like that, guys, I'm back. Uh, this time wearing a much more appropriate and kind of chill outfit because I don't want to draw attention to myself this Christmas as I'm traveling around because the theme for this video is what to wear this Christmas without getting your ass robbed. Is that right, right Jeremiah? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you just sent me an Instagram story of, uh, of a crime that happened, you know, a violent crime, I would say, in, in Cannes, and that was pretty scary. Yeah, you know, like a watch crime is at an all-time high. It's going absolutely crazy. You know, now they have trucks driving around London just telling people to go home, oh, yeah, I've seen hide that. your watches, go under the covers with yeah. an AK-47. If you don't need it, don't wear it. <laughs> exactly. That's what it says. Exactly. Police. But okay, before we get into what to wear this Christmas without getting your ass robbed, let's first wish you guys a very Merry Christmas. So Jeremiah and I have our Christmas Negronis. Cheers. Lanja. And Merry Christmas, dudes. Calm the nerves Let's a get bit. some uh, music. <laughs> That's why the Christmas people expect me to wear Okay, so as you guys can see, I still have my Richard Mille on my wrist. So this is the number one watch not to wear this Christmas if you happen to have one. This is a watch that has become basically a huge target, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when, if we talk about um, that story in, in Cannes, it was exactly that. Uh, there was this gentleman who was wearing a Richard Mille and then, you know, a black unmarked van just pulled up at the side of the cafe that he was there with his friends, you know, just having a good time. And like two men came out. They were, like you said, brandishing AK-47s. And I've heard that some European countries, thieves and robbers actually have access to weapons like that. But I'm not sure if they're activated or they're, or they're live or they're deactivated. Yeah. But if you see one, you know, in person, you're going to freak out. Nonetheless, Jeremiah, I think if anyone came at me with, with even a butter knife, I would be inclined <laughs> to just like roll on the ground with my belly up like a terrified puppy right. and just hand over my my watch but the yeah. point is guys is like wearing a watch like this and I'm very very lucky to be able to have one is just basically putting a target on your back and it's mm. just so just don't do it right so step number one this uh, Christmas in, in order to enjoy yourself is first as I said before try to dress a little bit more low-key you know like um, you may have some wonderful outfits and that's great but yeah. I've got my West Waldo outfit today. exactly exactly <laughs> so, yeah, I hope they can't I, find I, me I like, exactly <laughs> yes we're very inconspicuous <laughs> with these hats the second thing I would say is that uh, yeah so the, the most important thing is if you I'm um, you know a lot like, like me, I'm sure you guys have some wonderful watches and you somehow feel like almost like incomplete if you're not wearing one of these watches. Well, I get it and I understand as well, but unless you're spending Christmas in Singapore or Dubai where it's incredibly safe and where you could probably take this watch and put it on a table in Starbucks to like save your place. And I'm you not joking could. that you could actually do that in Singapore and probably do Dubai as well. Um, the best thing is just to take it off your wrist and leave it at home, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna put that watch aside and let's think about what watches we can wear this Christmas without getting our asses robbed. Now, the first thing is, of course, Jeremiah, um, you want to actually wear a cool watch this Christmas, right? Like you, you know, but you're going to, a lot of you are going to capital cities in, in Europe, London, Paris, uh, Rome. I mean, these are also all top destinations in the world, you know, for watch thieves. I think London today is probably the worst, if I'm not mistaken, right? Okay. There's, a, there's even an Instagram page called Watch Crimes London that we all oh, follow yeah, as well, yeah. which is crazy. So let's talk a little bit about the way in which watches are stolen, right? So it all kind of starts actually from people who are spotting the watches first. So, you know, like a lot of times when you check into your hotel, you know, you think you're safe and you're walking around the environment of like, a, you know, a very beautiful five-star hotel, you think you're safe. But at the same time, the waiter, the, the desk staff, the coat check person, the attendant in the toilet, all those people are out there clocking watches. And it's the same thing in restaurants as well. I've heard so many stories about waiters being paid to like tip off, you know, like uh, criminals about a guy that walks 
walks into the restaurant, has a great meal, probably has a couple of drinks or whatever like that. And he's got a paddock or he's got an AP or he's got a Richard Mill on his wrist. And when they, he goes out of the restaurant, those guys will follow him and then they will rob him as well. And I actually know for uh, actual fact, this happened to someone in London. Um, he was in a restaurant completely at ease, having a great time, walked out. Two guys followed him. He tried to get into his car. They held the door open. They put a knife on his chest and said, give us to Richard Miller. We're just going to stab you. Crazy. And that watch was so valuable for Crazy. them. It was. And, and that actually is one issue, Jeremiah. It's as if, like, you know, the police in these cities don't take watch crime seriously. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if you stole, let's say, $100,000 worth in cash, right? That would be a serious capital felony, right? right? right. But somehow, if you're stealing a watch that's worth $100,000, no one seems well, to give a shit. But a better return right? is worth a lot more than that. <laughs> exactly. Economy. Yes, and from what I understand, also like you know, like uh, you know, well, you know, you have cities like Los Angeles where yeah. there's zero bail as well, so people just get let out without having to post bail. Yeah, you got uh, you know countries where like uh, you know in France, I am told also when the criminal goes before the court, he just says this like really depressing story, and then the French you know sort of socialist judge <laughs> looks at him and goes, <laughs> and he feels what feels sad we as well, and just lets him go to go steal another watch. You know, oh so, my goodness. So anyway, but you, you have to be to be fair to the police. Some of these running gun crimes is quite hard to catch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, I think it's also, I mean, again, this is not you know, for me to say, but because there are essentially no borders in yeah. Europe anymore, people can travel from anywhere and then go to those other destinations, those much more civilized destinations, and then go steal. So even when I say London's become a really dangerous place or uh, Paris has become a really dangerous place, and for that re oh, and actually, you know, Geneva has become a very dangerous place at certain times of the year as well. It's not necessarily because Swiss people are stealing or French people mm -hmm. are stealing or English people are stealing. It's a lot of times, you know, criminals from other parts of Europe that are going there and taking advantage of that and then kind of fleeing across the borders. So we have to say it's the onus on you guys to stay safe, you know, keep aware of your surroundings and yeah. Yeah, just don't attract attention to yourself. Yeah, so I mean, dress down, um, wear a festive Santa hat if you feel the compulsion <laughs> to express yourself satorially, right? But at the same time, you know, also have some situational awareness. And I think mm -hmm. that this is one of the issues that we have as Singaporeans, right? Because Singapore is so incredibly safe, right? Um, Singaporeans therefore think that that applies to them when they go overseas as well. And also, and sorry, cr criminals, if you're watching this, I hope I'm not giving away too much. Exactly. Singaporeans are also we should, incredibly. Okay, we, should, we should stop paying away. They're incredibly gullible, right? you know. And I'll give you a really. case in point. My ex-wife went to Paris. Uh, like okay. you know, well, we went to Paris together. It's got me almost 20 years ago, and this guy stopped her in the street and said, uh, "I wasn't around." And, and said, uh, I'm with the police, please show me your identification. Now, if you know anything mm -hmm. about France, no one will ever do this. This is a huge infringement like on your personal rights, mm -hmm. right? And so she was fumbling around, she took it out, and, and, and he said, well, let me see your wallet, let me see your driver's license or whatever. And he basically took the cash that was in her wallet and ran away. So I think the rule of thumb also, if someone tries to walk up to you, a complete stranger tries to walk up to you in any mm -hmm. of these capital cities where you're on vacation, um, and tries to be like, hey, can I have directions? Or uh, um, I'm with the police. Or I think the appropriate response is, fuck you, you fucking fuck. <laughs> Give him the finger and just walk away. Right? Okay, I wouldn't say that, but I mean, if you know, the good hearted and good natured of you out there, I mean, just just be careful and don't allow that better side of you, you know, yes. to kind of be a uh, target or victim yes. of crime. No, yeah. because as I know you guys are all super nice people and your inclination because you're overflowing with the milk of humanity is to go and try <laughs> to help people. But you know, those motherfuckers are probably trying to steal it. 90% are yeah. probably are, are trying to steal your shit. The other thing to be aware of also is that uh, department stores, right? So I've heard multiple, multiple times. Actually, I know, I know, I, I know of an actual scenario where like department stores and I'm sorry, please don't sue me Harrods, you know, like when you're walking around there, especially if you're browsing in the watch department, like people that are in there are kind of looking at what watch you're wearing. Okay. And I actually know a very um, well-known person in the watch industry. She and her husband were in Harrods and then her husband was like, dude, there's like guys following me. And she's like, you've got to be kidding, you know? And then, uh, um, and in fact they were, and they were fortunate enough to get away. They had to make a dash for the taxi. And even then they were like attacked um, as they were getting into the taxi as well. I mean, if you can imagine, the psychological scarring that must leave on you. You know, how are you going to enjoy your holiday if you're attacked? How are you going to enjoy exactly. your holiday if your watch was fucking jacked, right? It's, it's ruined. terrible. It's ruined. It's ruined. Well, wait, I also have to add that it's not just individuals that are being targeted. Even some brands have been targeted. I've heard news that Stoa, unfortunately, has had their um, production facility and their museum wow. even broken into, like watches from the 30s and the 70s, oh, many gold terrible. pieces, historic like pieces. irreplaceable, yeah. these historic pieces as well. Kodoki. Yeah. Their, their Australian retailer has been broken into as well, and they, and they lost two you know, pieces as well, a classic and an octopus. So yeah, in fact, guys, if you see that, please, you know, let, let I, these brands know. I believe there's know. a warehouse um, owned by a very famous secondary dealer um, uh, or e-commerce like platform that was broken into as well in Germany. So it's right. like, it, it is like clear that watches are being targeted. So guys, just 
leave your baller ass watch at home and wear something great but inexpensive and probably the metric to use is will you be emotionally distraught will you be existentially destroyed if someone takes it from you or you lose it right so we have in our santa stockings watches oh yes christmas has we, come early we have selected <laughs> that we feel beautifully <clears throat> fulfill this category so jeremiah why don't you go first okay let's see what i have in here ah unimatic unimatic one of our favorites uh, we love unimatic let me just take this off first, Amazing. my trusty Seiko tuner. So what we have here is the Unimatic and Bait Limited Edition. Yeah, right. created by my buddy Eric Chang, who is phenomenal, the, the, the inventor and creator of Undefeated, who recently did an amazing collaboration with Moser, right? Yeah. Uh, but he made also this watch, an accessibly priced uh, Unimatic, and it just absolutely kicks ass. Tell me yeah, why you I like mean, this watch. I mean, we love the minimalistic, you know, aesthetic. You know, look at these sword shaped hands. The yellow dial, of course, is really striking you know, the Arabic numerals with the railroad track. And I like because that, you know, Unimatic does a very minimalistic design, but yeah. he's taken it kind of a bit to the extreme with Absolutely. nothing even on the bezel. No, it's, it's such a cool watch. And, you know, we, we love uh, what Unimatic does. We also love everything that Eric does as well. Um, and I actually, I think I have another Unimatic I've been told, Santa's Elf uh, whispered to me. You do. Have, um, which was a, a kind of a premiere because that watch is going to be dropping in a couple of days, but we'd love to show it to you anyway. However, let me bring it into my stocking Take this and, off. okay. So the first watch I pulled out <laughs> is probably the watch I'm actually going to wear when I travel okay. this Christmas. Ooh, and it is a it's Citizen it's EcoDrive Marine Super Titanium, a watch that has this really cool square titanium case. It's super lightweight. It's uh, like blacked out and discreet. This particular example has a full luminous dial. And you know, you know the penchant I have for yeah. fully luminous dials as well. Cool. And it's just cool. Like you put it on your wrist, you know it's always going to be working perfectly. Um, it takes an incredible beating as all citizen watches do. Yeah. Uh, and it just looks hands up, you know? And you get, okay, I don't want to say 100%, but you get at least like 60% of the emotional satisfaction of wearing anything else, right? I mean, What size just, is this? It's a damn good question. Um, I'm looking at it, I would say it's probably, we can, it we feels can like totally it's 42. Measure it. Okay. Jeremiah, you've got magical calipers. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Let's measure this side. Wow, it's about 53 millimeters. That's a hefty watch. Yeah, you know, it's about the size of a BR03 somehow. So even though it measures a 53, it actually feels more like a 42 by 42 watch. You know? Right. Uh, I'm more comfortable with the 40 millimeter of, of the bait here. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, I think, 13.9 millimeters in thickness. Right. Um, lug width 22 millimeters. So that's a, you know easy, even number. You can swap out right. the straps really easily. Uh, the lug to lug, incidentally, it's 49. My wrist is about seven inches. So you can get a good gauge of the sizing of this here. Okay, so Citizen uh, Eco Drive Marine Super Titanium, uh, Bait Times Unimatic U4. Okay, what else do we have in our stockings? Let's keep looking. And you know, we actually, you can actually talk about this watch because this is a great choice for this this Christmas as well, right? right. Yeah, uh, but, uh, yeah. But we'll go, we'll do that at the end. Okay, okay. so Jeremiah, what's next in your stocking? Okay, let's see. I think I have a couple more here. Let's take this out. Wow. Do you know what this is, way? Is that a Mercy Instruments? Absolutely, you're right. And uh, this was launched as a series of three watches uh, just recently in, in November. Right. But Mercy, the brand, um, it was founded in 2017. Nice. By Arthur uh, Gerby. Oh, cool. Yeah, he's the managing director of, of Mercy, which is a French lifestyle brand. And, you know, they sell like... A it's bed. a cool store in yeah. Paris, right? They, yeah. they, they sell bedding, like tableware, dining wear. Nice. And, and, you know, um, it's... And this was... Mercy was actually a pet project of his. And when they started, they started with, you know, a, a, a quartz watch, I believe at only 250 euro. Yeah. And with the classic design cues of the field watch, but, you know, uh, in a more like French Parisian flair. What kind of movements here? Uh, this one has a Salita movement, okay. 210 manual wine. And uh, what kind of price are we talking about? This is 590 euros. Really? Incredible value. It's and I love you look at the bracelet, you know, it's like the old bunk clip bracelet. I mean, unfortunately, this isn't expandable, but... I mean... It's a little bit sharp, but I mean, the, the design of the watch is phenomenal. Um, mm -hmm. It feels good. It feels nice when you're winding it as well. Uh, and for $500, I think there's an absolute like killer. Yeah, so it's yeah. 38 millimeters. Oh, wait, hang on a second. Uh, Mercy did a collaboration with our friends from Hodinki. As yes, well. correct. Yeah, that was yeah, a really that, cool that was a, Yeah, that was a mechanical movement as well with the you know, signature Hodinki gray with applied Arabic numerals. But Very nice. This particular model is so minimalistic. I mean, when we compare even to the bait, right? It's just... You know, you see the small miniature dots for the hour markers, a very, very refined and minute 
a minute track. I wouldn't even say it's a minute track. It's kind of like, you know, small little lines that, yeah. that make up the periphery of the dial. And then just, you know, that stylized 12 and 6. You know, looking at it from here, it's, it's actually the level of finish that's been applied to the case for a $500 watch is really impressive. You yeah. know, I like the contrast of the brush case and then the polishing of the bezel as well. Very yeah, impressive. Absolutely. So 38 millimeters um, thickness is about 12 mm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Let, let's have a, a little toast to Mercy. Also, our ice is melting in our <laughs> <Okay>. crystals are garnished. <laughs> because, uh, you know, well, so guys, what's the name of the gentleman at Mercy? Arthur Gerby. Arthur, well done, sir. That's an excellent watch. We, 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 we bow to you. Yeah, I love it. I love it. You know, with this quick release spring bars, you can change. Incidentally, it comes with a, a black NATO strap as well. Nice. Right. I think that on a black nose strap would be like for me like even cooler, right? And maybe even more stealthy as well. I, I, we might have something else with all the okay. black nose strap there. All right. Well, I feel like Where I'm I'm, I'm lagging behind both in terms of the Negroni drinking and watch displaying <laughs> as well. So this is my personal uh, G-Shock, nice. and I think a G-Shock is probably one of the G best watches that you can wear and just forget about this Check Christmas this season, right? Uh, the what irony, do you like about this? Well, the irony is, of course, this actual G-Shock is kind of expensive. It's the full titanium <laughs> one that has this sort of lovely digital camouflage applied to it. But a G-Shock is a phenomenal flex. watch. It's, <laughs> a, it's, a, it's a flex only to yourself, right? The same masturbatory flex. Oh. It's like <laughs> but it's, you know, I absolutely love this watch. And the cool thing about this is that the vast majority of people will never be able to tell the difference between a $200 G-Shock and this one, which costs a little bit more. And from a functional perspective, it has everything that you can possibly want on a watch. This being one of the higher end models has both Bluetooth and it's solar powered as well. So as soon as you get off the plane, you connect to the app and boom, like it refreshes and it tells you exactly the time so that you are in your destination. On top of that, it's got incredibly important things such as a stopwatch, which you can use for timing soft boiled eggs or timing the okay. conditioner in your hair or timing, <laughs> I don't know, the passing of your life. Right? Yeah, well, it's just like a, a wear it and forget it watch. Right? Exactly. And it's incredibly handsome as well. So I said G-Shock for me is also a killer. Don't forget guys that there was also some amazing G-Shocks that were made this year as well. There was a great Bamford um, oh, yeah. G-Shock. And then Hodinkee just dropped also their John Mayer, um, the last oh, the in the trilogy, in the series. which is very cool as well. It's a killer watch is okay. Okay, so we have. My turn. I think I have. I think I have one more to go. Nice. So we have Unimatic, Citizen, G-Shock, and Mercy watches. Okay, cool. Let's go through. Oh, this is the one on the Black NATO. Well, hang on. So is that a second Mercy? Yes, and it's the second Mercy. And yeah. It's a different design. Yeah, completely different Mercy design. It's a sector style dial. Okay, this one is killer. This is phenomenal. Right. Like, I love the design of this one. So it's called the La Nationale. This one was called. I mean, the previous one that we talked about was the Everest. Nice. Why is it called La Nationale? Well, I'm actually not quite sure. Wait, no. yeah. Arthur, why is it called the National? <laughs> Please put it in the comments yeah. below. But I love this. This is an it's absolutely cool, right? beautiful watch. Well, you know, I'm a sucker for like the old fashioned sort of sector and scientific dials. And, yes. uh, and this this is absolutely stunning. I love it. I like the Chemin de Fer. I like the different contrasts and finish in the center of the dial and the sort of minute track and then on the outer perimeter of the dial as well. I love the choice of the baton hands in blue, which are great. Um, the size of the font, the size of all the indexes and so on like that is perfectly executed. It's a wonderful watch from a size perspective as well. Yeah. So this is the second one. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the third one. The third one's actually a limited edition okay. of 250 pieces right. in collaboration with Archie Watch, right. which is a uh, Paris-based uh, watch dealer. Not Archie Luxury, right? No, 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 no. Uh, do, do you find Archie Luxury entertaining? <laughs> Uh, I think I think he's got strong opinions yeah. on, on everything. You see yeah. the one that that, that uh, was teaching pronunciations of like French of like watch brands. He was. Is it JJ Lecoutre? <laughs> JJ Lecoutre. I don't think we should go on. Yeah. With okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Yeah. So my last watch in my Christmas stocking here is another Unimatic, and this is a watch that drops at the very end of the year, and it is our collaboration with Unimatic. So this is the Modelo Uno. GMT Arctic Fox. Arctic Fox, why? Because it's got this white camouflage motif. It is white on white on white. And it kind of reminds me of all the things that I liked, you know, from that era when white was really cool, right? So the Ferrari Testarossa in white, like mm -hmm. Sonny Crockett used to drive in that mm -hmm. Miami Vice, right? Uh, Kasimir Malevich is a Russian supremacist painting as well. White on white, I think is another one. Uh, the Stormtroopers as well, their livery as well. But also it was really cool. We call it the Arctic Fox because it's, a, it's an animal who is normal colored. It's, I think it's like russet colored most of the time. And then in winter, its coat miraculously turns completely white. So it's completely right? stealth. And it's the most stealthed out like a uh, fox, but yeah. or it's the most stealthed out like predator. This watch will not change into a different color during the other parts of the season, but it is phenomenal looking to me at least. So what we have here is a Cerakote or ceramic coated case. 
Uh, then we have white indexes on white, which have black outlines as well. And then you've got a, um, a matte aluminum bezel, which also in certain light look, looks white as well. And this watch comes with three different straps. We've got this white rubber, we've got a gray rubber as well, and we've got a white camouflage strap as well, which I really like. But anyway, I'm gonna put this on my wrist. Is that yeah, the same? You know what's really cool about like oh. Unimatic is that you um, you put the watches on your wrist and you're just surprised at how like how high quality they feel as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there you go. That's that's my GMT watch. You won Unimatic Times Revolution Arctic Fox GMT. So there you go. That's that watch. And I think that helps us. I think that and is I that think all? That, my sock was empty. Yeah, my stocking oh. is empty too. You know, I think. Oh, I oh, see. It was a lump of coal here because I was misbehaving. <laughs> no, no, it's no, no lump of coal at all. Tell me about this watch, uh, Jeremy. This one? Because I think that that's a great choice. I know. I know we didn't put it in the stocking. Yeah. But it's it's a classic. But but tell us. You know, like this is a Seiko SBBN zero one five. Right. Right. Nicknamed the tuna. Right. Why? Because it looks like a tuna can. Yes. So there's a shroud that surrounds uh, the watch case, which protects it. And, uh, you know, originally when Seiko came out with design, they actually received a letter from a, a, a diver. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that the watch that he was wearing deep underwater, you know, the crystal, you know, tended to like pop out. So what Seiko invented was an L-shaped gasket mm -hmm. that fits, you know, just underneath the crystal. And then you put the bezel on that and you don't need a helium escape valve uh, at cool. all. Right. So it's just based on the, the, the gasket placement and the design. And this watch is rated to 300 meters. And the very first watch that I bought is like my first paycheck. It's Fantastic. been with me since 2050. Yeah. And I wear it all the time. Like okay. nobody really knows what it is. You I can go incognito cool. wherever you go. Well, there you go. Stealth, right? Yeah, exactly. So there you go, guys. That is our list of watches to wear this Christmas without getting robbed. Um, we wish you a very merry holidays, a wonderful new year. Thank you for tuning in and best of luck. And if we have offended anyone from any of the, the, the countries or cities that we talked about, that was certainly not our intention. Yeah. It's just a little bit dangerous out there if you're wearing a nice watch. So stay safe, guys. Peace. Take care and happy holidays. Oh, and cheers. We gotta finish our drinks. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Bye.